Welcome back to my channel. Glad you could join me. It's around 8 o'clock Monday morning, 17th of January. I've been here since about 6 o'clock in the morning. I stopped about half an hour ago. The sun's getting up now. Very muggy morning. We're at Dow's Lagoon in Sandgate. Now its official name for Dow's Lagoon is the Second Lagoon. So if you're looking up on the map, it's very hard to see Dow's Lagoon. But just look for Second Lagoon. It's around a 30 minute drive north of Brisbane CBD. It's quite a nice place. Now the lagoon's quite high, you can see that at the moment. Last time I was here a couple of years ago, it was just about bone dry. And there was a lot of birds, especially right in the center. It looks like a paddy field in, when it's dry. A lot of magpie, geese, pelicans, but this morning, no magpie, geese, no pelicans, but a lot of egrets here this morning. I shoot with my Nikon D500 and the Nikon 200 to 500 mil lens. Now this is how I photograph my wildlife, 99% of the time. I shoot in manual mode, auto ISO, auto white balance. The reason I shoot in auto ISO is because I like setting my shutter speed to the conditions, but my aperture stays at f5.6 all the time. I know some people will say that at f5.6 it's not as sharp as at f8. Well, for my lens here, f5.6 gives me sharp photos. I've done so many tests between f5.6 and f8 that I'm very satisfied that f5.6 gives me very sharp photos. Also, if I increase the f8, it means I'm decreasing the amount of light that's coming into the camera by one stop, meaning that the ISO will be much higher. So I'm trying to keep my ISO as low as possible. The lens stays in VR sports mode all the time. Some people will tell you that once you're over about 1,000 of a second or 1,200 of a second, you should disable VR. If you watch my channel, you will notice that I get the shakes. If I disable VR, I don't get stable shots. So for my purpose, VR stays on all the time. It might slow down your shutter rate, the amount of frames you get per second. But I would rather lose one or two frames per second and have sharp photos than having the maximum frame rate. Metering is set to center weighted. 90% of the time that's what I shoot in, center weighted. The other 10% of the time is set to spot metering. I never shoot in matrix. The only time I use matrix metering is when I'm shooting landscape. That's how I set up my camera and I use back button autofocus. This is a godsend. If you don't know how to use back button focus, especially on the D500, I'll put a link up here where I show you how to set up back button focus for your D500. At six o'clock when I got here, there was quite a few egrets around, little egrets, intermediate egrets, great egrets, and I got a couple of really nice shots, but then they sort of moved away as they got brighter, and I went for a walk around, walking close to the lagoon, and I disturbed the striated heron. Now, it's not the best shot because it was in the shade, but I was still very happy to get it. Then walked around a bit more, spotted another photographer who I'd seen a little bit earlier, and he was showing me a couple of photos of a bird he'd been really hunting for. And then he told me, he said, oh, did you see the stone curlers? They were just near the school there. So on the way back, I stopped and I got a couple of really nice photos of some stone curlers. And take a look at these two photos, because I want to show that sometimes you've really got to look for your background. This was head on as I'm walking along the track. And look, you can see the background is very busy, very hard to distinct the stone curlew. But now take a look at this photo here. I walked around to the right of it so that I would have a clean background behind it. Doesn't this photo look so much better? This is something that you have to think about when you're taking photos. Sometimes we don't get the chance, but when we're walking around, try to position yourself so that you have a clean background. So if you know that birds are going to be taking off, try to make sure that like you've got a clean sky. If they're coming into the brush and all that, like trees, try to take a photo of a bird in the trees. The bird won't be as separated as it would be if it's in the clean open air. So this morning I've got quite a few birds, egrets, striped herons, quite a few other birds and I'll share them now. But at the start I'll put the settings that these photos were taken out. Now understand these settings are just relevant for this morning. If you go out and the light is different, these settings will not match with your photos. But it gives you an idea of 
of settings that I use with the conditions that I faced this morning. Now the sun's out now, but when I came here this morning, it was very overcast. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a big thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.